congratulations. Well, first we got a couple of congrats, right? The first congratulations, eight top five finishes. What an impressive run. Well done. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Such such a roller coaster experiences and feelings. Yeah. I bet. Now, logistically, Vinny, how do you carry a ring with you? And were you just mentally prepared at any leg to propose? I wouldn't say I was mentally prepared, <laughs> but at any leg, I was going to go down on one knee for sure. Um, but no, I mean, the day of, I, there was a moment, Sarah, where we were in Argentina, mm -hmm. uh, the mega leg, where a lot of the teams were on that mat. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, gosh, this feels right. This feels really good. And then Phil goes and looks at me after I've been kind of like not saying anything. And he looks at me and he says, anyone else have anything to say? And I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> and I just kind of got so scared and anxious that I just bailed out. Um, and so when we got to the final four, I actually told Amber went off to the bathroom and I told the rest of the cast and the production team, a reminder, like everyone's waiting, like Vinny, are you going to do it at some point? And I said, I woke up that day and I said, today is the day because I didn't want it to be in the top three because I don't want to overshadow our engagement with the, the race to the top three. I want that to be separate. And if we're going to be in a part of that top three, which I believe we were going to be there, um, that I don't want it to be a part of the engagement. And so I told myself, man, if I, if, if we're going to do it, Vinny, we're going to do it today. And so, and it was a beautiful spot. It too. was so perfect. And I, I just kept on saying to myself, it's got to feel right. It's got to feel right. And you, you just trust your gut. You got to trust that. And so I guess I never trusted it until that very, very moment. Well, let's talk about that leg. You, you, I mean, at this point, it just seemed like tiny little mistakes, right? Like maybe a drink in the wrong glass, not a running immediately. It, was there anything else you could do? So I think a lot of it was just the anxiety that he knew he was going to propose. I think that kind of uh, affected how you raced that day, right? Oh, That's so what you told me. Significantly. The so they actually didn't show that we struggled with the drinks. Mm -hmm. so, like beyond... Any task that I've had on the entire race, I didn't really struggle too hard. But that day, I could not make a drink for my life. It would say, like, put light uh, uh, light rum, and I would put dark, dark rum. rum. Yeah. Put pineapples, I'm putting oranges. And I'm just, uh, it's saying blend it after, and I'm blending it then. And it's like, then what's going on? And I knew, and she was just digging in because she was like, what is going on? And then I'm over here saying, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this proposal? What am I going to say? You know, that's truly where my brain was. Mm -hmm. Well, can we talk about the mega leg? Um, Amber, you yes. were very helpful uh, to a couple of teams. It made sense to me to help Danny and Angie. They had helped you. I was confused about helping Leticia, I guess. How did you feel about that? I was confused about helping Leticia too. <laughs> um, I think for me, I I just have a big heart. And with the fact that Rod and Leticia kind of were with us up until that point, I just couldn't imagine like leaving her, like helping Angie and then leaving Leticia. Like I would just have felt like a huge a-hole if I did that. And I know that it's a race for a million dollars and I probably could have gotten top three had I not helped Leticia, but it's just like, I just can't, I can't just leave Leticia and help Angie. So. Yeah. I think our integrity really was on the line there. It's like, uh, we told ourselves, how are we going to operate within this race? Are we going to play this socially? Are we going to do it with an alliance? How are we going to play? Cause we studied the race. Mm -hmm. And so we said to each other, we, we have to stay true to who we are. And you could see that all throughout the race within our relationship as we kind of struggled, but also how we interacted with other teams. Like everyone who knows us is knows that that is truly how we are. We're not someone that's going to to have that heart to be like, OK, I'm going to help you, but I'm not going to help you and you're going to struggle. Because if you saw, I really, truly believe Latisa was having a very hard time with that. Mm -hmm. 
And we were all like beside each other at the station. So it was obvious that I was helping Angie and I had not told Leticia that I was going to help her either. And she was still struggling. And I'm like, let me just, let me just help her. Like, let's all just stay together through the mega leg. We started together. Let's finish together. And it felt, it felt right. doing. We were very, very proud of that because to be honest with you, if you take a look, the next challenge, if we didn't have three, as a, as a group, if we didn't have three different teams as a group, we couldn't close out and commandeer those stations. And that could have been the difference between us getting eliminated or being able to stay in that race. Yeah, the state challenge. So running the races is, is one part of the experience, but watching yourself back is a completely different one. How has that experience been for you? Uh, I mean, you want to talk about how it's just seeing yourself on TV here and the way you talk and it's like, oh, wow, is that how I sound mm -hmm. like in real life? Like, I feel like it's just watching yourself in third person. People always talk about that's the the highest level of like self-awareness is being able to see yourself in third person. And that is truly what you can do by watching the yourself on the amazing race. And we try to, we've gone through so much therapy to try to get to that level mm -hmm. of in the heat of the moment to be able to see your else, see yourself and pull back and say, okay, that's Vinny mm -hmm. and I'm seeing Vinny. And so to do that in the, the heat of that moment was so difficult because you're just on to the next thing. You're like, okay, what's, you know, what are we doing? Who's behind us? How are we going to help each other? And so experiencing that was so enlightening. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do believe that the, the edits were really, really sensationalized that I was also a, a being able to experience Vinny the villain, which I've never, I've never been that villain. I've never played that role before. So I got to really experience how that could be for somebody. And so whenever someone is chosen for the cast to be that, that edit, um, I really can have empathy for Anna Lee from the last season or Justin. From, someone, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I definitely think um, that's a very unique experience for uh, the one chosen person of the cast. Amber, I was struck by moments where it seemed like you doubted yourself. And I was hoping that you were able to go through the experience and see that you actually have some great strengths and you accomplished quite a bit. Were you able to do that? Yes, I think that's pretty uh, obvious. And in my patterns throughout my life, like I have achieved so much and I, it's like why do I doubt myself when I can literally do anything that I put my mind to and I think it's just I want to be that for like other younger other younger girls um young women who have confidence issues and just telling people that they can do it they just have to believe in themselves and just and then and then you do it like I'll be struggling putting something together like a a piece of furniture I'm just like oh I can't do it this is so hard and then I like Vincent I'll be like figure it out babe he like gives me that opportunity to like let me do it and I do it and it's like okay I can do this I don't need to rely on him to do everything I I can do a lot of things on my own so it's just been cool getting to see that on TV and see the growth and yeah it's been really cool and I and she's not the only one who has that issue with self-talk. Like I've gone through that journey of self-talk and understanding myself. And, you know, it, it's the inner critic in you. You know, your parents either have, it can be the inner voice or they can be the inner critic. Mm -hmm. And so if if how your parents and how your your life has been kind of cultivated will really program you to act in certain ways, especially in your worst at high level situations. Um, and so I have so much empathy for Amber. Like, I just try to hold space because I think that's the best thing I can do is hold the space for her to expand and grow within that. Um, and there was times where I was like, this is frustrating, babe. I need to just take control of the directions. And then she was like, but directions and navigation is mine. <laughs> like, so there was that whole dynamic that we really got to grow and uh, go grow through because I am a control freak so I do <laughs> like being in control and I need to also know that he has his own strengths and I have my strengths and we need to figure out how to work together as a team 
and just rely on each other for those strengths. And I think that was one thing I really learned um, during the race. Such a cool experience. I would never change how it, it was edited. We learned. It's almost as if we went through another race after the race it, because it was so right. it was so edited in a very, very uh, triggering way. Yeah. Yes, it is two uh, very specific experiences. So now that you've had a little bit of space, you've watched it back, can you sum up what it was like to have this experience together? I mean, I think for us, like we, of course, we wanted to win the million dollars and we could have really done a lot, uh, jump started our future, possibly bought a house. We were planning to pay off our student loans with the money. But I think the real, um, the real prize was growing with our um, ourselves, like learning more about ourselves and how we work together in a relationship and just knowing that we can get through anything during the race and after the race, uh, we can handle a lot more than we think we can. And I think we just have to stay on each other's sides, like stay on each other's teams and not, um, not be antagonistic, be supportive and build each other up. So. Well, it was lovely to speak with you guys. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Sarah. Good to talk to you, Sarah.